Hi everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, Basic Build 2. This is part 8 and this is the barn. Now, just a quick word about the recording level uh, on the videos at the moment. I bumped it up again this time because a few people said I was still a little bit quiet and not what they used to. So I've bumped it up uh, a little bit more. Hopefully we'll just find that happy medium somewhere along the line. So we'll leave that and we'll get on with what's actually been done on the barn. Now last time we did all the tile work and the lead which is brilliant because that's all finished off nicely now. So the back and the or the front and the back has been done. Now on this video I'm going to turn my attention now I believe the, the front gable to the actual copings that are running up on these gables. Now I was going to use stone but I didn't like the look of it. What I'm actually going for is a brick soldier course. Now uh, what I'm actually using is to start off with this is a one course corbel and what this is is it's two bricks with a queen closure in the middle and this will actually when this is put on to the wall just makes it slightly bigger than the actual nine inch wall so it actually steps out and on top of that we'll be going a soldier course like so now I'm just balancing this on here now the soldier course being the same size as the nine inch wall is going to give you that sort of step out and then step back in. Now this is what they mainly used on walls to finish walls off to cap them off with. So that's the way I'm going. The mould number for that will be at the bottom of the screen because uh, this is a, a totally separate mould to what we normally use. So that will be on the bottom of the screen. So what I'm going to do now, I'll get set up, I'll get the camera in a position so you can see and uh, we'll get on and get these copings on. Now, kick off with, I'm hoping I'll better show you this without getting my great big hands in the way. Now what I've done to start with, this little one coarse corbel, I've cut just one piece off for the bottom. Now that will sit with the queen closure in the middle like so. I don't know if you, can, if you can see that. That just sits just a few mil, well not even a but it's about a mil, either side of the actual wall. So that's the first bit will be glued in. Now the second piece, what I've actually done is I've just sanded a slight wedge. So when we actually put this piece on here like that, it will actually come down and meet up and make a nice little joint. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get this piece glued in and then I'll come back to you and we'll carry on with the next bit. Now we've got the bottom bit glued on and the first piece. So as you can see that I've just made a little overhang this side as well just to match up with this overhang on both sides so it's all nice and equal. And now it's just a matter of getting uh, our pieces and carrying on and gluing them on. Now, when I actually come, which you can't see because the camera's down too low, when we actually come to the top piece, we'll do it exactly the same as what we did at the bottom. We'll just bring that up and sand it at a slight angle coming down so the next piece marries up to it and that is simple as that. So that's the base done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get these all glued on on all four sides and then I'll come back to you and we'll get started with actually putting the soldier course on. Corporal courses have all been uh, glued on. I've done all four so you can just see the one down the far end and the far end there and we're working on this end gable. So they're all ready now to take the soldier course and we're not we won't be doing no different to what we've done uh, for the corbel course for the soldier course and if we're in the right position to start off with I've just cut three bricks off and the first brick 
are sanded down at an angle. Um, that's our starter piece. Because that's sanded down at an angle, when we actually come to put these strips of soldiers in, it will just butt up against that nicely, make a nice little joint, and then will give us that effect. Now it's very simple, this will be glued in, that will be glued on, I should glue the next strip on and when I get to the top I'll do no different except for the opposite way, just sand it at an angle to make a mitre and then so when I bring the other side up they join nice and cleanly and they look tidy. So I'm going to get on with this first one and I will come back when I've completed it so you can have a quick look. Now I've glued the soldier course on right to the top as you can see and I had a little bit of change of heart when I got to the top because when we bring the next one in it works out to be a full brick and just to save a little bit of mucking about I'm just going to cut that off level sand it down and that will be okay so what I'm going to do now I'm going to carry on doing exactly the same as what I did this side on the other three sides when I get it complete I shall come back to you all the soldier courses now have all been glued on got both ends done as you can see and I'm quite happy with that, that looks pretty good uh, let's turn it right the way around will that go into shot? yeah just about so that's both ends done so that's the gables finished off now all I need to do is give that new brickwork uh, a coat of the brown wash and the 50-50 mix and a coat of the black that's the 50-50 mix as well I'll give, give that a coat now and they also need grouting up which I'm going to do because we've already been through uh, grouting up so you do understand about how to grout up so I'm going to get them done and then when we come back we're going to get started on the guttering at the back here we'll get some guttering down pipe and I'm going to also replace that uh, broken tile which I broke a few minutes ago as well so that's on the next bit so I shall be back with you very shortly everything's had two coats of wash now the first coat was the brown uh, that's the Vallejo dipping wash 50-50 mix give that one coat uh, let it dry then I gave it a coat of the black dipping wash a 50-50 mix again and then I browned it up it looks okay I'm, quite, I'm more than happy with that uh, both ends are done, it's blended in nicely but we've still got some weathering to do on it uh, we will blend that in even more a bit later on now I was going to move on and do the guttering now I was going to use the foil and make my guttering up like I normally do but I've just found out that Mini Arts have re-released uh, their accessory for buildings and so I've put two on order uh, to save a lot of aggravation uh, because it's already got the guttering in plus I wanted to see what the actual guttering is like uh, so we're going to put that on hold until I actually get these uh, from the hobby shop so what are we going to do? well we're going to move on uh, as we've got everything basically finished now is we're going to move on and we're going to start on the doors at the front even though you can't see the opening and we'll pull that back a bit so we're going to get started on making these doors and also getting these doors uh, lined out and maybe even making some doors for them once we get that done we've actually completed the actual build itself and then it's down to weathering and everything else but I will be cutting the base for this I keep threatening to cut the base but we've just not had no good weather to actually get out there and get things uh, sorted out but that will be happening very soon so I'm going to push this to one side I'll put you on pause we'll go down to the bench and we'll get started with the uh, doors now quick run through of what I'm using to build my doors with now to start off with I've got my piece of uh, polystyrene a nice flat piece as you can see uh, on top of that I have got a little drawing now this drawing is 
the size of my barn door. So in retrospect this is the actual frame and this is where I'm going to actually going to build my doors on. I've put a piece of cling film over the top of it so we're, when we're gluing we're not going to stick to the paper and get ourselves into a right mess. Now the opening size for this particular one is 138 millimeters by 113 and also I put a centre line in roughly where the, the centre of the doors are going to be it isn't really uh, really critical to get it to the last uh, thousandths of a mil for the simple reason is these two doors will be open so there will be nothing to compare them with if you understand with what I mean so first things first uh, what I'm going to do, I've got some scrap wood and what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a bit of a frame all the way around that I can actually work to. So just keep on that line there, and that part of the line there, in, in. So this is just, well what I'm making virtually is the frame that's in the inside of the of the barn. Not too mad, but it just gives you something to work to, and just makes life a little bit easier as you're going along. So we've got all them bits, like so. Now. That's where I'm going to build. Actually, going to build my door inside of that. Now I've already cut all my pieces of uh, balsa wood. What I did, I used my strip cutter. Got right there. Uh, I've got a, a, a number eight setting on it, eight mil. I just cut a load of strips off uh, a piece of stock material I had, and I actually just cut them to length. So all I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to build up my door from the inside of that to the centre there so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to glue these in one at a time rather boring but a little bit of glue and this is PVA that I'm using with a little bit of uh, black painting uh, just to give it that colour down so we're just going to do that like that and as we go along push it nice and tight and we'll just push a few pins in like so like that so what I'm going to do now I'm going to glue the rest of these in and when I get to the centre I should come back reach the centre uh, it's all worked out planks which is good now what I'm going to do I'm going to start building this side of the door but uh, first things first I've got a little piece of angled styrene, uh, 0.8 thickness and I'm strictly just going to lay that between that side and this door so I don't glue this side of the door to that one and also it will give me a nice little gap. So I'm going to get on now and just start putting these planks in, gluing them across exactly the same way as I've done on that side. I've removed all the pins, both sides have been glued together it's just now to remove this centre strip which as you can see gives us a nice little gap uh, between the two doors. Now the next thing is to get the bracing done on the back. Now I've already given myself some marks. I've marked in 10mm from the top and give myself a mark and I've marked in 15mm from the bottom and give myself a mark and also I've split the distance between there and there and give myself a centre mark. Now this is for the actual bracing to go across to support all the door. Now you're going to say why 15mm at the bottom? Well this is the actual size of the opening as it stands now and I haven't got no floor put down on this diorama so I've allowed just that extra 5mm so if I need to I can just cut this bottom piece off and it's still going to look equal all the way through so that's the reason why the 15 mil at the bottom so we're going to get on now and we're going to get some bracing put in on the back now I've already cut 
uh, a few bits of timber. This is 5mm by 1.6. Uh, I've only cut them just to fit in from side to side, like so. And one at the bottom. Uh, I've done this, well, I didn't really have to do it this way. But doing it this way, if you're going to actually put these doors so they actually close together and you're actually going to see the back of it, it'd be a good way of doing it so you get everything lined up and nice and even but it doesn't really matter in this case but there you go what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark up the centers where this this join is and I'm, then I'm going to cut these and then I'm going to glue them down so I'm going to get on and get that done and then I'll come back and we'll get on with the rest of the bracing on the inside now then pieces have uh, all been glued in and nice and dry now so now we can move on to actually putting these cross met members on now these are put on to stop the door from dropping so all we need to do is mark the top mark the bottom up and just cut them at an angle now in great blue peter fashion i've already cut mine so they will just fit in like so we've got two for this side and we've got two for that side like that so what I'm going to do now I'm going to get them glued in and uh, then I should come back to you now all the strips have been glued on and why it's been drying and I've been sat here with the idle hands I've just been using my uh, metal scribe and I've just been giving it a little bit of a grain why things have been drying I've been doing this on on both sides as you can see I don't, I don't really know if you can see that but it's just to give uh, a little bit of texture to the wood for when it gets a coat of uh, wash so we can actually pull these off yeah, there's one there's two now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do exactly the same with the pen I'm going to just give this a nice little bit of graining all the way through just to give it that uh, highs and lows of, of, that wood gets also I'll be giving it a, a coat of wash and now I'll be using the Vallejo dipping wash again 50% uh, Vallejo dipping wash, 50% uh, thinners I'll give that a coat of the brown and a coat of the black and then I'll come back to you when I've done that because simple reason is we're going to need to make some hinges doors have had a coat of brown wash the 50-50 mix and a quick coat of the black at 50-50 and I think they look pretty good now what I did do is I didn't put anything on top of it as it was drying and what's happened is that it's actually cut I don't know if you can see that it's actually cut the wood which looks pretty effective so I'm quite happy with them. Now, on to hinges. Now I have already done a video making these hinges, but when I watched it back, you couldn't see a thing that I was doing because my big hands were in the way. But I will run through how I actually did them. Now, these are my little hinges that I've made up, which will actually work. They will actually pivot. Now, what did I make them out of and how? Now to start off with, you need some 2.2 uh, styrene. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have none, so I went rifling through my spares box, and I found I think it's a pack 45 shell. Uh, so what I did, I cut the top off. I used a one mil drill bit, and I drilled right the way but the full length of the actual shell then what I did I cut that up into four millimeter pieces and that's these bits just here so that's drilled right the way through then cut into four mil pieces then what I did I went rifling through my uh, box of 
PE and I found bits of PE of well all of the same size I think this is roughly about uh, 3.5 mil but it was just the frets uh, so I just cut them off and then what I did was actually put that small piece in the end like so and roll the actual PE round it and super glue it in so you've got that little round bit at the end and then you've got your actual arm that comes out that we can fix to the door so I hope that's all nice and clear now the actual hinge which I shall get one out here is done the very same way now it is the shell casing again and what I've done is I drilled in the top and we glued a piece of one uh, mil uh, silver wire, so it's copper silvered wire. So that was that makes your actual pin that goes through. If we can see that, that will actually go through your hinge and make everything work. So we've got a one mil piece of uh, wire in the top, and also as you can see, I've drilled into the side and put another piece of wire in this is going to go into the actual frame so all the, the door is suspended on that very quick and easy things to make but very fiddly so that is my hinges so what we're actually going to do now is I'm going to get on and we're going to actually get these uh, glued down and fitted and I am going to put some I've got some uh, MIG not MIG Ming Ming rivets and bolts bolt heads which I will glue onto the top of this just to finish it off to uh, look like it's bolted to the actual door so what I want to do now I'll get reset up and we'll get on and we'll get these fitted now fixing the hinges to the door and to the frame now to start off with if you can see I've just put a pencil mark in where the timber is at the back so we've got a pencil line just indicating where the actual timber is. Now, the hinge is going to need to overhang. Now, if I can do this without getting my big arms in the way and hands, so that needs hinge just needs to sit out. It's well, actually, it's four mil to sit in the center of the actual frame. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to glue all four hinges on with a four mil overhang and um, when I've done that I will come back to you and then we'll get them fixed to the actual frame okay we've got the hinges all glued on and now it's time to fit them now to be honest with you I am going to do a little bit of guesstimate on this because I don't think there's any really easy way of actually hanging these doors so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a small mark there one just there and the same at the bottom Let me get that in there a mark on the inside and a mark there now I know you probably can't see that but I can so that is roughly where I'm going to put the hinges and what I'm going to do is drill a small hole and fit them now I'm going to do that off camera because I need to be all over the place and I'll come back to you as soon as I've drilled the holes and uh, put the first door on that wasn't too bad actually they went on quite quite well now now it's the door will swing backwards and forwards which I wanted and also once I get these glued in I better slide the actual door off and put that to one side as I'm working on the rest of the base so that is brilliant so I'm going to get on now I'm going to get the other side fitted uh, get these tops cut off and I'll put some rivets on the actual hinges and uh, when I've done all that I'll come back to you right both doors have been hung the tops have been cut off I've put the rivets on well the bolts should I say inside and out and as you can see the doors swing open very easily and also they do come off 
the storage and that's going to be great because I don't really want them on while I'm doing the rest of the build. Now all I'm going to do with this is at the moment is probably just give a bit of black paint on the hinges and that will be it for the moment. It's going to need a handle and some bolts but I'm going to leave that until I'm actually ready to actually position them up to where I want to actually go. So that is it, that is it. Come to the end of another video. Uh, I will do some pictures and tag them on afterwards a little bit close up pictures so you can see what's been going on. And with that all I can do now is say thank you very much for joining me and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one.